What's up, everybody? Griever here, and today we are going to be uh, repainting a couple of foam weapons that I got from Spirit Halloween for my daughter Sam's Halloween costume. Now, I'm not sure when or when or if this video is going to be coming out, and if it happens to fall after Halloween. Uh, don't think of this as just a Halloween video. This is really kind of a prop video that you can apply to anything, be it a Halloween costume or a cosplay. So, my daughter Sam is, for Halloween, is going to be her D&D character that she actually made over the summer. Uh, her name is Avery. She is a shifter and she is a fighter rogue. So, part of her costume is, one, going to be a sword, which I still trying to figure out what I'm doing with that one. But the other part of her costume or and weaponry is being a rogue. She has a pair of daggers. So while we were at Spirit Halloween, uh, we happened to come across these. And these are listed as bloody butcher knives. And honestly, I really liked the design of this. And so did Sam, which is really the most important thing. And I even told her I can make these look so much better, <laughs> even with my amateurish uh, ways. Um, so we are going to be turning this bloody butcher knife into a very nice rogue's dagger. So let's just go over to the workbench. I don't know how much of the actual work process I'm going to be able to show, but I am going to explain what we're going to actually be doing. Uh, try and keep you through the step-by-step -step processes of it, and then we'll show you the final results and see if this one will live up to this one. Okay, so here we are at the workbench. Uh, here is the first completed dagger. Uh, you can see it a little bit closer up now. I have completely redid the blade from this kind of rusted black uh you can kind of see more in the detail there uh and kind of shoddy blood effect which is just literally red paint that they just went done um i mean over and all i still like the design of this uh it is listed as a butcher's knife but honestly for the length and the size of it to me this it this is a dagger. It's close enough to being a dagger. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and match this one to this one. And what I did, and if you want to follow along, um, or at least get an idea of that, uh, what I did for this was I did really no or minimal prep work on here. Uh, one thing you'll need is a uh, some kind of a razor knife or an exacto knife and please 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 be extremely careful when you do this um, but I just really kind of went along the uh, center seam line and tried to get as much of the flashing off as possible um, along here on the blade along the top and especially in the handle area I'm not too much worried about where this faux bandage or wrap or whatever is because uh, that's getting taken care of by something else but at least along the wood because if it's one it's going to look like crap if you leave it on but two if it's raised up just at that right spot it could potentially scratch or cut you so um, but other than that there was no real prep work I did on this over this um, I just started painting right onto it uh, if you want, you can wipe it down. Um, but honestly, I really didn't feel the need for it. So I kind of just skipped that part of it. Uh, some things, or at least the paints that I wound up using were, um, I had this black because that was going to be another idea. And I'll explain that in a moment, but essentially what I have is I have this, uh, metallic acrylic silver which is what I used to repaint the blade. Uh, for the wood, I started off with this nutmeg brown as a base coat and then went over it with a few of my uh, Citadel paints and I dry brushed 
over this uh, some Rhinox hide and some Steel Legion drab. And then to bring it all together, I just used a little bit of the Agrax Earthshade and that was really it. Um, also a silver Sharpie, which I used for the screws because I was not attempting to hand paint those things. Uh, this purple on here, the purple wrap, uh, it's, it's just hockey tape. Um, I happen to have this for um, other reasons. Um, actually, it's for my uh, practice sword, but uh, yeah, I gave Sam the option of what I can do is I can paint this black and then kind of just do a dry brush of like gray or white over it uh, just to bring out that the details because I mean it isn't I mean I gotta say for 10 bucks this thing does have some nice detail on it uh, but yeah it was that or I could wrap it in the uh, the stuff that I have on my sword so she opted for that she also loves purple as well and so that's where this came in so yeah this is just Aki tape I got off of Amazon um, I did not do any kind of sealing on this because one I didn't want the wood to be shiny because I want it like kind of like worn it's been used for a while it's you know it's not something new especially looking at the blade with all the dings and stuff in it you know it's not new um, <coughs> excuse me but also I always have that issue of I don't have the right um, glosses or not gloss uh clear coats and i didn't want to take the sheen out of the actual metal of the blade so there's that uh one last thing especially for um i'm doing this on a uh, on a cooler weekend than normal uh but also to help dry in between things because that silver does not cover very well it's a lot of coats like that was about I would say maybe about six or seven coats um, a hairdryer uh, get yourself a hairdryer um, thankfully my wife let me borrow this one um, once it's all set once you have your first like layer on and if you start painting and you see it's starting to move that means stop get your hairdryer uh, go over it a couple of times on low and cool uh, this way because you don't want to overheat the uh, foam just go over that a few times let it then sit for a few minutes and then you should be able to do your next layers or so okay so um yeah that's really kind of the methodology of it um i'm going to start painting this one up and then we'll see and we'll uh, check in in a little bit and see how it's coming along Okay, so in what took maybe about less than 10-ish minutes um, and about four coats of paint, the blade has gone from this to this, which I must say is a vast improvement over what it was. Uh, now I'm probably going to do at least maybe another two coats on this side before I call it good because you can still see a little bit of that fake blood in the tip here. Uh, so yeah, maybe about another two or three coats and I will call this done. Um, I'm not good. It's going to be the exact same thing on this side along with the spine of the knife and also don't forget the edge. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing for the blade itself. Um, I'm not going to bother filming the rest of it because you saw me doing this kind of time lapse. It's literally put a coat on, hit it with the hairdryer. Once it's kind of, once it's tacky to the touch, 
or dry to the touch. Obviously, if it's dry to the touch, uh, you can put on your next coat. But if it's tacky and but not coming off on your fingers, you can start doing light coats again at that point. Um, we'll pick this up in a moment. Well, for you in a moment. Uh, but we'll pick up on what we're doing for the wood on the handle. So, see you in a moment. Okay, so we're going on to the handle portion of it. Now, as you can see here, I've only kind of set up a little bit for the back end of it. Uh, basically, what I'm about to do here is what you'd be doing up here as well. So I'm just going to kind of show, not the quick and dirty, but just kind of like the idea of what's going on here because this way I'll just be able to do the front here because as you can tell I have a little bit of cleanup to do so uh, this was maybe about three layers of the nutmeg brown acrylic paint and so now we're just moving on to the Citadel colors that I have and just really kind of applying these in a basically kind of a dry brush, dry brush idea. Uh, we're going to do the Rhinox Hide, which is the darker of the two first. Just want to make sure I get it all mixed up. But yeah, uh, we're going to go with the darker one first to kind of get the wood grain look going. So, and with dry brushing, you always want to get as much off on of the paint as possible. And then just lightly. This looks a little heavier than dry brushing, but I also want this to kind of stand out with the lighter brown more as the kind of base portion of it. But yeah. We're doing this. Oh, that's way too heavy. If you mess it up, just wipe it off with your finger, try to take a little bit more paint off, and then just do it again. Because you know the old saying. <laughs> we don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And once you get here to the uh, side portion of it, there is no wood grain there. So you're actually kind of just make it your own at this point so you kind of want it to match up there all right so now that we have that all said and done and since this is also really light you're just going to take the hair dryer do a quick little once over to make sure it's all dry before we do the next section of it so okay now I'm not closing that one up because you may need it again uh, after this just as kind of a touch up so to speak but now we are going on to the Steel Legion Drab. And again, make sure your brush is clean. And this is actually going to kind of be more akin to a dry brush. So. Just adding a little bit, not a whole lot of contrast over the dark color that we just put in. And also for, if you have a dark spot like I made, uh, that will also help relighten that up a bit. Clean off the brush. It's not bad. Like it. Here 
hit it with a hair dryer again so that it's nice and dry. And then just go back to the Rhinox and get very, very, very little. And then just lightly give it a light little tap. To just repop that green. And now that is a very nice, and you can see the the way it looks like. This definitely looks a little bit more like a worn wood, more so than just that, at least in my opinion, but we're not done yet. So hit it one more time with the hairdryer. Get your trusty silver sharpie and then do your best to just fill or color in that screw. Oh, that one's actually pretty good. And if you do get a little heavy handed on it, easy fix for that. Um, you can kind of touch it up with whatever color you want. I'm just going to take a little bit of the Rhinox and then just whatever you didn't like, just try and fill in. Hit that with the hairdryer. See, and there you go. You fixed a little mess up. So then now the last thing we're going to be doing here is, and you're going to need a paper towel for this part, is you're going to get a brush and we're going to take the Agrax Earth, because that is a brown wash. Get some on your brush. And literally just paint it on. So, I mean, as you can see, this is pretty liquidy. It is a wash. Need a little bit more, go get a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dab this off. I'm not going to wipe it off, but I'm just going to dab it to try and keep it, if I can, in the deeper recesses. So. And also, obviously, you want to do this before it dries. And then, once again, hair dryer. And here you can see the differences between the repainted wood with, you know, embellishments upon the screw heads as opposed to the original portion of it. So I am now going to fix up this end of it. Um, I'm not, honestly, I'm not going to show you how to do the tape. Um, that is very much straightforward. You are taking hockey tape and you're just wrapping it around 
the wrap there. Um, I may show it. I don't know. But either that's going to be next or my final thoughts on how this project went. So see you in a moment either way. Okay, so Sam's Knives Daggers are done uh i'm really happy with how they came out with it more importantly sam is very happy with how they came out with it because the extra detail i put into the wood grain and just making the blade look better uh was just honestly a great improvement to begin with but then now that i have arlene here in the shop Hi. instead of it. yes arlene <laughs> finally made it uh but yeah so after Kind of thinking about it, it was like, okay, well, we have the knives done. We can do a little bit more, so we're going to make some sheaths for these. So instead of this being my final thoughts and end of part of the video, this is now a continuum of it. Ha! Fooled you! Yes, so now these are mine. You yeah. have the way. Yeah. Anyways, so one of, the, I think, the main concerns that we had was, you know, she's not going to be carrying around these out the entire time. She does need a hand free to get all of her candy. At least right so we're just going to make some very simple sheets uh just add some fabric i might put some interfacing in later on we'll see how the just the fabric portion actually turns out um but it'll just so that she can just slide these right into her hip pockets you guys can't see plus i'm a girl who has pockets i'm a girl's pants no one i digress anyways so we're going to create uh two sheets just to go on the side we kind of already jumped the gun a little bit here on today's workshop day. So we had this lovely leftover fabric from which project was this? That was going to be for the Thief's Tool roll. Ah, the Thief's Tool roll. So we decided to go with a different fabric for that. Uh, we'll link the video down below, hopefully, uh, where it was such thick leather, I actually had to use an awl, which was quite an experience. Um, but thankfully, this is thin enough so I can just use the sewing machine, which is really nice. Um, so all I did was start with this fabric, I folded it over four times, just in half and then in half again, and then took one of the blades and then drew around, well actually on the inside, uh, with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the blade and just cut it out and you guys will just see my sewing process and hopefully see it all come together, putting it on a belt and all that good stuff. Yay! Mm -hmm. All right, let the sewing commence. Again, we're only going around the portion where the blade is going to go through. Do not sew the top portion. I cannot stress that enough. I'm not be... This is going to be the stupid mistake that I make. I know it is. Just keep going. We'll get there when we get there. steal it. <laughs> Alright. Shush phone. Alright, we'll cut off her ends here. And then, do you have a straw or a skewer of some sort? Oh, yes. Usually, actually, what I use at home now is a um, dollar store uh, curlers. I find are actually very useful. Actually, this is thick enough that I can just do it with my fingers. Usually they're too small, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you cannot pull them inside out just as is, but thankfully this is large enough so that we can. Just unravel. Hand me the sword or dagger. Just 
Come on, you poke it out. <laughs> there we go. It's a very tight sheath. I didn't realize how thick it actually was. So, I'm actually going to recut this to be larger. Perfect. Do not forget to incorporate for how thick it is. I did not realize it was that thick on the side. It's a chunky boy. It's a very chunky. That's like a half inch. Most daggers, you can just do the method that I did, but I did not account for that. So, we will recut. Mm -hmm. Should be. And it's not the end of the world. Lovely machine. And it's pretty easy to do at that point. All right. All right, so this is the original width that I cut it out to, and this is the new width. So we got significantly more wiggle room on the sides. <laughs> so hopefully this one will be actually able to fit more appropriately. Watch, this is going to be too much room, and we're going to have to do it at, like, one and, like, Well, no, if it's too six. much, it's easier, because then I can just make this oh, okay. tighter. There we go. So... It is always better to go bigger first than smaller. I just, I didn't account for this. When I've done this for other things, they ain't tick. <laughs> With four Cs. Alright, let's try that again. Next Much better. So now it's Significantly better. Yes. And then we'll cut two slits right here, so then the belts can go right there. Cool. Alright, so now the prop knife build is done. Yay! So yeah, sheets came out significantly better the second time. Obviously, for you guys at home, make sure you take into account the width of your blade that you're putting in your sheet the yes. first time. Um, and then we also made some cuts to feed the belt loop through, so they'll fit nice. Yes. You guys won't be able to see, but they fit quite nicely onto our hips, like this, at a slight angle, with the blade facing yes. down, all that good stuff. Yep. And since we didn't really go into it earlier, but yeah, the knives also beautifully done. Uh, the purple hand wrap on here is, the you know, Sam decided on that. The wood grain, I think, came out really, really nice, especially doing the three different layers of, like, the brown colors, and then the wash definitely helped. Yeah. And 
Also, since these are supposed to be kind of found by her character, you know, the fact that it has the divots in here just really gives it the character that, you know, the prop needs because a prop should always tell a story. It really should. So. But yeah, so these things, that's how it looks like on the back. Yep. Me. So, yep. easy. Done. <laughs> yep. So I, I know I didn't do much today, but no, we did some other projects it, in the background. What what you did was still extremely helpful. Thank you. So yeah, so these are a great thing for if you want to use them for a cosplay or a Halloween prop, whichever you want to do. But yep, a nice little easy project to do. So. That's going to be it for this video, and as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, let me know how you think you, these came out, and, you know, what props have you made for Halloween costumes or cosplays, you know, let us know in the comments, we love reading them, and ooh, don't forget to click the little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when we're doing our silliness here on the channel, but, <laughs> oh, ooh, yes, P.O. Box, we have the P.O. Box, too, yes, we have the P.O. Box, I forgot the last time I hear I scared you with that, so... Yes, we have the P.O. Box as well if you want to, you know, drop us a line or something or whatever. But again, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Later.